But what you see in these stories is that once the fig tree is done, it's done. Because what did he say to the fig tree? Let no fruit grow on thee from henceforward forever. And then what do we see in this passage? Miserably destroy those murders. Does it say, and then later, later they come back and they take over the vineyard again? I mean, is that what you see in the story? No. And what about in Luke 13? No, if it doesn't bring forth fruit, cut it down. But then later we're going to fix it. No, it's done. It's over. He said, it's taken from you. It's given to a nation, bringing forth the fruit thereof. And it, let me tell you something. We as believers, the holy nation made up of all believers in Christ has replaced the physical nation of Israel as being the chosen people of God. And so to sit there and say, oh, you believe in replacement? The Look, of course it's been replaced when he says the kingdom of God's taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits of People say, well, it wasn't replaced, it's just added on. We've been added on. No, 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 that's not what it teaches here. He says it's taken from one and given to another. Because there are some that will try to get us all to basically become like Jews. Well, we need to be grafted into the nation of Israel, so that means that we basically need to start, you know, wearing prayer shawls and saying shalom and, you know, and hachflem and bar, bar mitzvah and whatever else. That's not what the Bible's teaching because what it said in Romans 11 when it talks about us being grafted in, you know, that tree, okay, represents spiritual Israel, not physical Israel. We don't need to go to physical Israel or join with physical Israelites. We're already the holy nation. It's a spiritual nation in the New Testament, okay? So that's who we are in Christ. We are spiritual Israel. We are uh, the spiritual nation. It's been taken from the physical nation. And you say, well, but God's not through with them yet. Oh, really? He cut it down? Oh, really? It withered away immediately? Look, these are prophecies that he said would happen in the future. Think about it. Because had he been killed yet? No, he's probably, he's saying, look, I'm going to be killed because he said the son comes and he's killed by them. And what does the Lord do when he finds out that they killed his son? He miserably destroys those murderers. Okay, in another place, and I don't have time to turn to all the places, he talks about how he's going to break down their tower and destroy their city. And he's going to let it out to other people. So if Jesus is predicting that that tree is going to be cut down. It's going to wither away. They're going to be miserably destroyed. The question is, did that happen? Did, after the Jews rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, were they cut down? Were they miserably destroyed? Was the kingdom of God taken from them? Were they wiped out? And the answer is yes, because we know that history tells us, you know, we didn't really need a history book as Jesus said it would happen, but history tells us that in 70 AD, Their city and temple were destroyed. And most of them were scattered into all nations. And in 135 AD, they believed in some other false Messiah that they thought was going to save them. And of course, he was a lying false prophet. And they were all scattered once again in 135 AD, this time for good. So in 70 AD, 135 AD, they were scattered into all nations. Okay, That was a result, my friend, of them rejecting Jesus. I mean, is there any doubt in your mind, oh Christian friend, tonight? Do you have any doubt that the reason why the temple was destroyed and why the Jews were scattered into all nations was a result of them rejecting Jesus? Do you have any doubt about that? Is there anybody who doubts that and just thinks, oh, that's just a coincidence? Of course that's why. You know, they're scattered everywhere. Now, if you ask some Jewish rabbi today, hey, why were you guys uh, scattered everywhere They'll say, oh, well, you know, we just weren't observing the Torah right. That's what they'll tell you. And then, you know, they all came back in 1947, 48, and became a nation. Obviously, they came leading up to that. But I asked these rabbis, I said, well, you know, did you guys, like, straighten up in 1947? Did you guys straighten up in 1948? I mean, why? And they're like, well, no, not really. Because they're, but they're like, but it, but it had nothing to do with us rejecting Jesus. That's not why they're scared. That's not why the temple was destroyed. That's not why it happened. Nothing to do with Jesus. We were just being disobedient in other ways. Well, did you guys fix it in 1948? Well, no, most Jews are still not following it. That's what even a rabbi will tell you. 
But listen, I, I've got something really interesting to tell you that you might not have heard. I've, I've never mentioned this in a sermon before, but it's really interesting when you look at the, the servants. Look at verse 38 of Matthew 21 there. It says, but when the husbandmen saw the son, and what does this parable represent? It's, it's basically the Jews, the chief priests, and the Pharisees, they see Jesus coming. What do, they, what do the servants say? This is the son. This is the heir, they say. The heir is the one who inherits. They say, come, let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. Now, I want you to stop and think about that. So they see the son coming and they say, this is the heir. Let's kill him and let's seize on his inheritance. What do they mean, seize on his inheritance? They mean that they want to inherit what he was supposed to inherit, okay? Now, here's what's interesting about this. If you talk to the Orthodox Jews, which, by the way, the Orthodox Jews are a minority of Jews, a very small minority of Jews that are Orthodox. They'll tell you, oh, we're looking for a, one, you know, a Messiah to still come, one guy. One guy will come. But if you talk to the Reformed Jews, which make up most of Judaism, the, uh, it's a different denomination. It's the big denomination of what most religious Jews or Reformed Jews, they'll tell you that they're not looking for, they're not necessarily looking for one guy to be a Messiah. Here's what they're looking for, a messianic era where they will all collectively be their own Messiah. Did you know that? Talk to the Reformed Jews. They'll say, no, 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 the Jewish people will collectively inherit the kingdom and collectively be their own Messiah. They're not even looking for one. Of course, when the one man shows up, they're going to love him when he shows up. But isn't it funny how they say, we're going to collectively be our own Messiah. We're going to just collectively inherit the kingdom of Zion. Now, isn't that exactly what Jesus said in this parable? They say, oh, we don't want Jesus to be the Messiah. We're going to be the heir. We're going to inherit it. It's not going to be Jesus. It's going to be us. We're going to inherit all things. And the Jews literally believe that they will rule the world when the Messiah comes, that they will be basically the kings of this earth and that basically everyone else will serve them or die. That's what they teach and believe. 